Okay, there's no way I was going to let a list go without me being involved in it. I just couldn't do it. Top 10 worst movies of all time. Not all time, but 2010. They could probably battle for all time because this year has been horrible. I'm going to do it fast. won't take up everybody's time. Number 10. It was a hard decision, but it is The Last Exorcist. Now, I do give them uh, points for making the, the guy uh, kind of an atheist and didn't really kind of believe and kind of used it as a gimmick to make money. I thought that was a good way to lead into uh, something different, something new. But uh, that ending and the middle and the story was just so ridiculous that it, this being on the list was so justified. And that is number 10. Number nine is Clash of the Titans. Um, I liked that way they poked fun at the old one, the old movie, but this was a little too short and a little too cheap. It's like they spent all their money on the post-production for this little 3D stuff they did, but it looked like all the money went into the cracking and then that one little fight scene and that was it. Everything else was just so generic. The Spiders was ridiculous. And you'd rather watch the old clay version of, <laughs> of what happened than this guy who's like totally emotionless playing Perseus. He was ridiculous. And with that being said, we roll right along to almost the same type of role with Legion. <laughs> I don't understand Legion is number uh, 8 on the list. And Legion is still leaving me kind of baffled as to what's the point of the movie even being made like if they have some extra money luck rolled over you know sometimes they have money still stuck in the budget that they gotta spend or they don't get the same budget back and I think they just have some guys walking around and like hey you wanna be in a movie yeah you know, let's put these wings on it's called Legion yeah Tyrese he's still here he's still hanging around from Transformers <laughs> he's gonna stop by for a day and do a day of shooting so that explains that. Then from there the list kind of fluctuates where it's like all oh, my brain is about to explode as to pick what horrible movie should go next. And Vampire Sucks had to go at seven. It's a hard decision but it did go number seven. Um, it sucked. <laughs> Not only did the vampire suck but the entire movie sucked. And you know it's supposed to make spoof of the clips and all that stuff, but I saw a better spoof on YouTube than that entire movie and the spoof they had on YouTube was about maybe two minutes. So, what's that telling? <laughs> Brings you to number six, which is Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day was, was really bad. It was like they saw the movie when they put everybody together in the this, that he's not into you and said oh wow we could do that too it didn't work <laughs> it was so boring and so stupid nobody even cared anyway then they put Taylor Swift in there and the guy from Twilight and it just didn't work okay I still don't know what Jamie Foxx is doing there um, the next on the list going right up uh, I don't even know what number we're on, but I'm going to assume, well, it doesn't even matter. The next on the list is Paranormal Activity 2. That's just, it just had to be on the list. There's no way you can put Paranormal Activity 2 off the list. Okay? It's, to me, I didn't like one, so a lot of people might like it, the ambient sounds, and that did nothing. Cabinets opening and closing was nothing. Uh, you get out of the house. <laughs> I, I can understand a movie when it makes some sense, but this movie made zero sense. They have all this evidence on tape, and the girl's like, let's leave. He's, no, let's stick around and not call the cops or anybody else. Well, let's try to do this ourselves. Ah, uh, yeah, right. I'm gonna really buy that. 
Next on the, <laughs> on the list is Resident Evil Afterlife. Um, what was that? It was a midnight premiere to this one, and these midnight premieres have been killing me. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how they cr she gets turned normal. They crash into a plane. They fly out of the plane. He does. She gets up and walks away from the wreckage. And I knew then. I said, okay. Grab a seat. We're in for a ride. And the next two on this list should round out the top worst movies. Um, I'm going to throw a bonus movie in there as well. I got Saw 3D. Okay, Saw 3D has got to make the list. Because that is that was the worst. Just when you thought the series had took a foot out of the grave with the last one prior to this one, they come out with this trash. I mean, just absolute trash. The 3D was ridiculous. I should have known when it was in 3D, that's all they were going to care about. When you see the, per the commercial of just the guy reaching out and grabbing somebody in the audience, you should know. They're not even showing you clips from the movie that this is going to be really, really bad. And it was just as horrible as I imagined. It was so stupid and the traps were so dumb. They had, they should just be called traps. It was really horrible. But, don't even want to dwell on it. That's how bad it is. Because I want to save it for these last two. And... A Nightmare on Elm Street is is two. No matter what number I put there, it is almost tied for worst movie of the year. First, you take Freddy Krueger, and I gotta find Robert England and write him and send him a letter and say, "Man, I don't know what you did, but you did it right." Because there is no way this guy is Freddy Krueger. Okay, this guy is about as menacing as a Care Bear. He walks around. Now they changed him from a guy who was a slasher who wanted to just kill kids to he just wants to molest everybody. He wants to molest them. So they want to change his whole MO. So now what? what is the purpose of him slashing him now? If he was just a guy who molested him and didn't kill him, obviously he wasn't a killer of him. He was just molesting him and sending him back home. Now all of a sudden he's going to start killing him. And the dreams are so lame. He's either in the classroom or the boiler room. And then Freddy was known for the storylines in the dreams to to just have them interact in the dreams to where you they don't know if this is a dream or if it's a reality. There and then he find out, Oh my god, I'm in, I'm in the dream and then Freddy shows up. There well, as soon as they go to sleep and they wake up they're in the boiler room, they know they're dreaming and he just shows up right away. It's just so lame. It's so ugly, original. But of course, what takes the cake, number one, is Skyline. Where should I begin? <laughs> First of all, this is, they start off great. I mean, as soon as the movie come on, boom, blue lights is putting it up for everybody. But when it gets to the movie, it gets going, going, it gets really stupid. Really, really dumb. Unnecessary dialogue, characters nobody care about, the stories that's going on in the middle of all this stuff happening that nobody really even damn sure don't give a damn about. Planes flying over, people blowing up jet fuel and they're walking away. It's really, really bad. A nuclear bomb that goes off in front of their apartment. The apartment is still standing in, in all the windows. And they get up and say, whoa. The radiation might get us outside, but besides that, we're okay. Let's go. The dumbest ending of a movie I've seen in a long time that made it to the main screen. And with that being said, that is a wrap for 2010. I'm depressed right now. Just thinking about these movies depressed me.